Welcome to another Tampa Bay Comic Con haul. I did one last year, and this is my fourth year going. Um, so I kind of figured I'll do one basically for this one. Let's first start out with the fact that there was no pamphlet. So, yeah. So, there was a couple of writers I really wanted to get autographs from, but I couldn't find them at all. So basically, I lo I spent like most of the time looking for these two. I couldn't find them at all. And yeah, according to the site, they said they were going to be there, and I couldn't find them at all. And one of the reasons why I couldn't, because I got rid of the pamphlet. Uh, the pamphlet could have really helped me uh, find these two. was Jim Palmer and Manny Connor. That was not exactly a big loss for me. But me personally, the reason why I wasn't able to get a pamphlet is because I got rid of it this year. And basically made it fit where the only way to get it is via an app. And here's the thing. I can't get that app because I have this type of phone. A slide phone. Next time I have to go there, I'll probably have to bring my tablet with me in order to get basically where the heck these people are. But luckily enough, that's my only complaint about this year is basically the fact I couldn't even find Dupai Mechanic. I looked everywhere. I just could not find. I looked every single square inch. Seems like almost every single square inch of that convention hall, well, the area where they had the convention. But I couldn't find Jim Parker and Amanda Connor. They're the only two I could not find at all. But despite starting off something bad, but let's start off some good things. First, something I got for free. And the thing I got for free was this poster. Last year I got a poster, uh, an autograph poster, basically autograph new Adams. This one's a Spider Man poster. Well, the reason why I think they did this is because, well, my personal guess, uh, because, well, Spider-Man Homecoming came out this year, so, yeah. Okay, stuff I got signed. Let's start with that first. Okay, first, I got the last sign by the, um, the, the lady who does the, the, the dub voice for Naruto. Uh, Millie, what's her name? I have to look it up here. Uh, let's see. Her name is, uh, Mally Flanagan, yeah, yep, Mally Flanagan, I got her to sign this, uh, and she said this is actually her favorite movie of the entire Naruto films, which, hey, I, I love this film too, so at least we're basically on the same page. I did not get a chance to ask her if there was plans to, um, of when, uh, Baruto, Naruto Next Generation was going to be dubbed. I didn't get a chance to ask for that, but yeah, I really enjoy the fact I got a chance to meet her. And first time I get, a, first time I ever got a chance to get a celebrity autograph. So yeah, it was nice to meet her. <laughs> All right, other stuff I got signed. Now these two are brought with me. Now I met Jerry Conway, but my kind of discipline, I was kind of told that he doesn't charge for autographs. I got there and he does charge for autographs. Luckily enough, it's not very much. It's only $5, but I only had 10 singles on me. I wanted to save my 20 for that autograph. So I basically only got two autographs. I was hoping to get him signed basically an issue with the Punisher, uh, the Count Vertigo one shot, uh, but just couldn't afford it. So I got two one. I got two books. I got uh, Firestorm signed by him. Uh, that's his signature right there, right next to Pat Broderick. Yeah, that's his signature right there. Sorry for the glare. I even got a chance to get him to sign Vixen. Yep, the character he created, so I kind of figured out, why not? Why not get him to sign this one? And he talked, she talked, I actually asked him that basically that, uh, basically I found out about, there was plans about the Vixen ongoing series, there was originally planned for the 70s, and he told me about basically about the comic of DC Implosion, I kind of knew about that, but yeah, he had big plans for this character, but because DC Implosion couldn't go anywhere, and I did ask him about uh, Firestorm on TV. He actually really enjoys Firestorm on TV. And I also asked him about the Punisher. Uh, of the four actors, he really enjoys the current one right now. Um, I also asked him what it was like with Jeremy as Senior. He's also worked with Jeremy as Junior. I, I kind of I didn't know he worked with, with Junior as well. But he really enjoyed working with Jeremy as Senior. And I gave him one of my business cards and... It was I. It was a pleasure to meet him. He was my favorite writer, and I finally got a chance to meet him. Yeah, and I've read a lot of this guy's work, so yeah. So I kind of knew about this, but thank you, Jerry Conway, for signing these. 
All right, I have a few other people who I get stuff signed by. I got uh, Casey Jones, uh, who did this issue of Birds of Prey. I actually purchased this, and because I didn't have any books, basically, I carry Casey Jones signs. Basically, some of these books I actually purchased at the con himself just to get these books signed. Lucky enough, I knew that Casey Jones did this issue. Now, uh, he's actually friends. He told me he's actually friends with Phil Nato. Uh, the artist who did, does this very cover, and he, who was also the artist for uh, Poe Dameron, and he and I both agree he's a he's a really good artist, and <laughs> yeah, I, I even told him I really enjoyed um, his his it, like we actually talked a little bit about Blockbuster, uh, the the Ronald Desmond one, and uh, I told him I really enjoy his cover. Yeah, I think right now he just does covers, but he's actually really good at this, so. Glad I got a chance to meet him. Now, this one, I was very happy to get this one. I got um, the inker who does this issue of Azrael. Um, what's his name? Yeah, and I actually talked to him about this, basically his long run for Azrael. This guy was the inker for the first 92 issues of this, um, uh, I think it's 100-issue uh, volume. The inker is James Pasco. Yeah, he did... He inked 92 issues, the first 92 issues of this run, which, and he says basically, I asked him basically about the Azrael costume, and he says the original costume, the Joker side of design was his favorite, it, it is his favorite, and um, he's not really a big fan of the Nightfall costume that much, but we talked a little bit basically about Daniel Neal and No Man's Land itself, basically him leaving, uh, stopping editor, and he says that the, that the changes of all the costumes, basically, that every time they basically Azra got a new costume, basically was the editor's idea to change his costume around. Not technically Danny O'Neill's. But, yeah. So, since I got the artist to sign, I got the inker to sign this one, all the stuff they could get for this particular book is to get the, uh, get Danny himself to sign this book and the artist. So, yeah. Great to meet the inker who did this book. I was surprised. I looked up basically how many issues of ink for that series. I was surprised he inked almost the entire thing. And I looked up Austin. He also, did, he also inked all three annuals that Azra had. It was amazing. Uh, here's my last book I got signed. Excuse me. This one was signed by um, Ron Rental. Now, he told me that him and Dan Jorgens co did this cover and he did some of the interiors. And we talked a little bit about this. Um, I tell him I really enjoyed this book, and basically, I enjoyed basically Dan Jorkin's run. And we talk a little about it. Basically, I didn't talk to him for too long, per se, I because I'm sure he had other things to do. But Conway, I talked to him for a little while, but yeah. Enjoyed the fact, I liked the fact I got this sign. So, the next time I meet up with um, either Dan Jorkin's, I'll get him to sign this one as well. Alright, now the stuff I purchased. Uh, that I did not get signed. Okay, I got... Um, Green Lantern Special number one. Here's a bag from. I think this is. I'm not really sure what. Uh, there's several different boots I got um, comics from, basically. I purchased. I think, I'm not sure which one. Uh, this one I got. Uh, yeah, I think I got these two there. If you don't think so, I don't know. I got uh, Peter Parker does Protective Spider Man issue 130. I got this because I'm a huge fan of the Hobgoblin. Yeah, that's the reason why I got this one. Okay, I also got uh, Secret Wars uh, issue one, the first appearance of Daisy Johnson. And can you believe this only costs five bucks? I would think it would cost a little bit more than that, but yeah, that's the first appearance of Daisy Johnson. Uh, Last Days of Ant Man, and uh, from this pile. I also got, uh, I was hoping to get the first issue of the series, but, hey, this best I can do. Uh, Avengers World, number 15. Here's some other books I got. Uh, Web of Spider-Man, 35, the second appearance of The Living Brain. And, of course, after this disappears, and doesn't show up again to the first issue of uh, Superior Spider-Man. Uh, another Hobgoblin issue, Web of Spider-Man, number 38. I also got... Do not fall. Stay. Stay. Thank you. I also got uh, Doom Patrol A number one. 
Come on, stay there, please. Uh, Secret Origins A number one, which features a Doom Patrol. Uh, Girl Frenzy, uh, Birds, uh, Girl, uh, Girl Frenzy, Birds of Prey, The Ravens, number one. Yeah. So I have another book by Chuck Dixon, another book from Chuck Dixon himself to sign. Uh, I got a couple of books that, um, uh, Steve Dicko did. I got, uh, I thought this was issue one, but, hey, I got an issue of this one. This was, this is Stalker number four. A uh, short-lived comic that Steve Dicko did. Uh, this one, almost any time I found this particular comic, it's always tend to be like 10, 20 bucks. I was so happy this this was really cheap. Uh, Batgirl Special Number One. This only cost me two dollars. Yeah, I was so happy to get this thing because I really wanted to get this one. Um, I don't it says Randall here. Did Ryan Randall do this one? Yeah, I see any random. I, I actually read this issue online. It, it's actually a really good special. It's actually the last thing that uh, Batgirl did before she showed up in The Killing Joke. Okay, this book was done by uh, Barbara Randall and Barry Kitson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, Danny knew was the editor of this thing. Um, yeah, this is the creative team behind uh, Hawk and Dove, the second and third volume of the series. So, yeah. Back row special number one. I also got the third issue of Shade the Changing Man. I have the first two issues, and so now I have the third one. So now I have only just, uh, I think, about six more issues to go, and I have this entire run. Mm -hmm. I also got uh, two trades. Excuse me. I got uh, Captain America Red Menace. This only cost me... Uh, seven dollars, and the original cover price for this thing was twenty bucks. So, yeah, got got good for this one. So, yep, got a good price for this one. This is the ultimate collection for this one. Yep, and this one contains uh, issues fifteen, twenty-one, Captain America Volume Five, and the sixty-fifth anniversary special. And the last but not least, I got uh, Shield Architect. Of forever uh, I got the first tray for this thing and yeah it's it's the first volume now yeah this thing also came with uh, some commercial stuff for the store but yeah now there was references to this at the start of Secret Empire yeah I'm a huge fan of this comic book it's just too bad that th that this comic that this particular version of Shield, not the one of Mark Wade, this is completely different. It's sad though this run was never finished because Marvel did not release issue 5. Yeah, the issue itself is, from what I've heard, it's finished from the second volume of Shield, but it was never released. Never. Despite the fact the book itself, the issue itself was already done, ready to be released, Marvel never released it. And, and here's the thing. The reason why this series was held up because of that particular issue, because Marvel has never released it. And they, according to Hickman himself, he would not work on issue 6 of that volume until issue 5 was released. And here's the thing. The last issue for this book came out 5 years ago. Actually, it was 6 years ago the last issue of this book came out. Um, this book is just pure amazement about this thing. I will do a review of this, my comic corner, when I get a chance, but yeah. I love this series. It is so amazing. And of course, this connection is also the Secret Warriors. Um, I was hoping to get my hands on the first volume of uh, Secret Warriors, but I couldn't find it. But that book is a good consolation prize. Okay, um, so that's really it for this haul. Um, I have a few comic corners coming up I'm going to do in a minute. But it was an okay con this time. It's just that I was really disappointed the fact they didn't have an actual physical pamphlet for me to go trying to find these people, basically, because most of the time I'm just running around looking all over the place for Jimmy Palmer and the Manicon. I just could not find them at all. I mean, according to the site, they said they were going to be there. Heck, I even checked today before I left. They are going to be there, and I looked everywhere. I could not find them. If I had the pamphlet with me, I can find them like, like that. But... That was the only thing I didn't like about the con. 
was the fact that you had to basically download it via download the app. And I couldn't because my phone doesn't have that capability to do that. So um, it may be possibility when, when, when I go there uh, in a couple months for Megacon Tampa, I may have to download the Megacon Tampa app because they probably probably uh, got rid of the pamphlet and made it digital. So I'm probably going to have to do that. I'm going to bring my tablet with me in order to basically figure out where exactly people are because I was not happy with that at all. I mean, I was expecting physical plant fit. Uh, the previous three years, I've gone to Tampa Comic Con. I've had one, and that's how I'm able to find these people pretty quickly. But since this year, I couldn't. I couldn't. Since I couldn't get one, because well, God forbid we actually have one. And here's kind of the weird thing. I needed that pamphlet because that actually helped me when I was looking for people. Yes, it did. Yeah. So. That was the only thing I just did not like about it at all. So I kind of got, I kind of left that convention and very disappointed the fact that I just couldn't find just two people uh, for set the sign. But aside from that, I had a okay time at this time's con. Um, so yeah, next time I do one of these con halls, it will be making on Tampa in two months, and I will decide. Hopefully by the time the con comes up, basically what day I'm going to go. I'm not going Saturday because Saturday tends to be the most expensive day. So I will check it's, I'll check the prices about basically for this year's MegCon Tampa. Um, so yeah. So okay haul, okay um, experience at the con. So it's a bit disappointing my experience at this year's con. But I still plan on going next year because I enjoy going to Tampa Comic Con and plus it's close by to me. So I'm still planning on going next year, but I'm going to have to bring my tablet with me because that's why it's going to have to be okay. But uh, I have three comic corners to do after this one. So you're going to see those videos come up really soon, okay? But until then, I will see you there. Bye.